Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale DCEU figure unboxing and review. This is not a drill, it's finally happening. We're taking a look at Cyborg based off his appearance in Zack Snyder's Justice League. I've waited so long to say that. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. Oh man, the excitement is so real. I get to complete my league today. At one point, I didn't think that was ever going to happen. As for the box art, front and center, a metallic finish image of Ray Fisher as Cyborg, not the actual figure. A glossy Justice League logo, Zack Snyder's Justice League over the top, and Cyborg down below on this silver kind of matte textured section. They have made an interesting choice for the packaging. Rather than going more colourful to match the rest of the league, they've gone with the black, white and silver aesthetic from the Zack Snyder's Justice League Nightmare Batman and Black Suit Superman 2-pack. Was that the right call? I'm not sure, a lot of people like to display their boxes. So having the entire league lined up and this guy not matching, kind of funky. Nowhere near close to being a deal breaker, at least not for me. Packaging is kind of tertiary to the figure itself. On the side of the box, the Cyborg logo, his name, and Justice League once again. Around the back, pretty boring, plain and simple, warnings and legal info. Underneath those warnings, a very subtle image. If you look closely, it's the Justice League logo. It's cracked and it's shattered. They've used that image for a lot of promo material, including, I'm fairly certain, for the front cover of the Blu-ray, the steelbook for the movie itself. I could totally be wrong on that. I don't actually collect Blu-rays. Underneath the slipcover, an open window showcasing Cyborg. We are this much closer to getting him out here. The window itself is actually in the shape of a shield, kind of like the Justice League logo. On the side of the box, silver, fitting for Cyborg and a Cyborg logo. Then around the back, I love this piece of artwork, it's so classy. It's a silhouetted image of Cyborg in two-tone, silver and black. Then his name, smack bang in the middle. Okay, enough foreplay, I know what we're all really here to see. Cyborg himself, it is your time to shine my friend. First in-hand impressions, wait a second, why is he so heavy? Hot Toys, you cheeky devils, did you just sneak in a little bit of die cast without telling anyone? It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah, I think they have. What we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. Hello old friend, it's been a while. It's the tried and true Justice League Flying Fox Ramp display base. We've got Justice League around the front, Cyborg on an etched metal nameplate, then the ramp itself fully painted and detailed. There's weathering, there's washes in the crevices, and multiple textures at play. All of these buckles fully sculpted. Around the back, I like these perforations, it makes it feel industrial. And up top, a dynamic flight pole with a spring-loaded waist clamp. I would have loved if they'd also given us a crotch grabber though. More choices, always a good thing. When it comes to head sculpts, we have two different options. The one with the Ray Fisher likeness on the left, and the other that's fully helmeted. We will of course pop these on the body and then we'll discuss them. Paint, sculpt, detail, and the light up effect. Seeing Cyborg casually sprout some extra limbs out of his back in the Snyder Cut, it was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. It was something different. It set the tone and it told us this version of Cyborg is quite clearly and drastically different as compared to the theatrical cut version. In figure format, we have two of these extra arms and they have their own points of articulation, multiple. They pick into his back via a hinge and swivel, almost like a huge wrist peg. Speaking of wrist pegs, the extra arms, they get their own extra hands. The open palm hands, which have three thumbs, try and figure that one out, and the closed fists, they only have two thumbs. Where did the third thumb go? I think it's folded up in the middle, maybe? They peg on via this translucent plastic mushroom peg. 
I don't love translucent plastic, I hope that it doesn't get brittle and fracture over time, and because it is fused to the arm, you can't swap it out with spare ones. These are too cool not to use. You've got two arm blasters, one for either side. They're painted in metallic silver like the rest of him, in fact, the entirety of him, and they have LEDs on the inside. This piece around the front is cast in translucent plastic. These bits are prickly. Don't poke your epidermis. Be careful. When you are trying to plug this on, grab it from here and then push it in. Do not grab it from this piece. Not only are they prickly, they also feel kind of fragile. Now you can swap out the tip on either one with a removable rocket. That means if you wanted to, you can take it off and it looks like he's fired the rocket at an unfortunately just revived Superman who isn't quite himself. I think this is the exact rocket that he did that with. If you find yourself preferring defense rather than offense, a shield is always a great option. It does connect up via the wrist peg, talk about that later. It's also detailed on both sides, and the detail is sensational. There is so much sculpt work here. I don't think there's a straight line anywhere on any of these panels. There's jagged edges, there's just so much going on. We've got these spine pieces, this little turbine bit in the middle, and it's all asymmetrical. All of these panels, none of these are identical. Whoever said that these look like ice cream cones? Why did you have to go and say that? Now I can't unsee it. This does look like little balls of ice cream stacked on top of one another. There's some textures sculpted in. They're cast in translucent plastic. These are the little jet rockets that do connect up to him. If you want him in mid-flight, these are the bits you want to use. The one thing, the one thing that you wouldn't think Hot Toys would skimp out on, they have its hands once again. You only get two extra hands for Cyborg on him, Currently closed fists, four in total. They're not even matching, they are completely different gestures. If you want matching hands, you have to go with the closed fists. Why could they not have given us more hands? No idea. What we are going to do now though, is get Cyborg himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Back before we had Zack Snyder's Justice League and we only had Justice League, the theatrical version, this figure would have been a terrible investment, just from a cost perspective alone. They had to pay for Ray Fisher's likeness, then they had to do an all new mold from head to toe, new accessories, paint it in a durable chrome style finish, and add LEDs. All of those things, the dollar signs would have started to add up very, very quickly. And chances are, because the movie kind of bombed and wasn't received super well, they would not have made their money back. That doesn't necessarily help collectors, though. We collect a line, we expect to complete said line. Don't make the villains, alright, sketchy. Still, make all of the heroes, especially when it's Justice League. Thank goodness for Zack Snyder and Zack Snyder's Justice League. It came along and it kicked the DCEU back into gear. Enough for Hot Toys to go and say, hey, you know what? Let's make Cyborg and let's go all out. Make something truly special. That's what they've done. They have delivered. It's still early on in the review. I'm going to tell you right here and now. If you're a Justice League fan, if you have the rest of the league, freaking get this guy. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Cyborg's first head sculpt. We do have to try out the fully enclosed helmeted one, and we will, don't worry, in just a second. This is a great head sculpt, at least I think so. I can see the likeness to Ray Fisher from every angle. And that's saying something, because most of his face is actually obscured by the cybernetics. The skin texture is both sculpted and painted, there's that speckling on the surface to mimic complexion. The furrowed brow helps, makes him look mean. The eye looks wet and glossy and real, and that hair, that is some very fine texture work hot toys. That fade, on point. Then for the cybernetic portions, very shiny metallic silver. I know, my lights aren't helping. There's some speckling on the surface to give it more texture and detail. And you also have washers in the crevices to bring out all the line work. There is a lot of line work. We'll get there. The LEDs are on, it looks the best with them turned on. 
which is unfortunate because he uses button cell batteries, so chances are you can't have them turned on all the time. That blue LED, it really needs to be on to look as good as possible. His eye has some detail to it, it's not just a red light, there's some white in the middle, so it does look like he's actually looking at you. If that detail wasn't there, it would look worse. Okay, I see what they were going for. I don't think anyone is actually going to display this though. It's that one thing from that one scene, that one moment in the movie, where he closes up the face shield and he ascends above the clouds. An awesome moment, don't get me wrong. The other head sculpt is even more awesome, so that's the one I'm going with in my collection. I like this mottled finish to it, it looks like hammered out metal. There are cracks with washers in them and that LED is so freaking bright. In person it is red, on camera it's blowing out because that is so freaking punchy. There is a lot more sculpted detail and I am getting sick of saying sculpted detail. It is quite literally though the best way to describe what is going on. I do not envy Hot Toys sculptors. This is a mess. There are multiple intersecting panels. They also have to factor in articulation. They've got to sculpt this spine work, have it be sturdy enough to be an actual figure so these can't be too thin and breakable, yet still look delicate like the design does on screen. You've got these hose pieces sculpted in, you've got all of this stuff going on, and around the back these panels which are removable because you can install the arms. Then for the finish, super shiny, it picks up the light beautifully. On the top of that shiny metallic silver, there is some speckling, just like I mentioned with the head sculpt. If that wasn't there, this would have looked really cheap and nasty. Having this speckling, it adds some much needed texture. It grounds the entire finish. The same thing can be said for the washers in the crevices. Maybe too heavy for some, for me, I dig this. Once again, if it wasn't there, this would look flat and single plane. You would lose all of the depth. Speaking of depth, there is a massive cavity for these chest panels. They're also articulated, so if you want to spread them out to showcase more of this red LED, doable. Or if you want to close them up to pretty much delete it entirely, yeah okay, that is an option. For me, I kind of like them somewhere in the middle. More shiny silver, more washes, more insane, super intricate sculpt work. I don't love this gap though, not sure why it's there, this shoulder pad could have come up and over it. It doesn't, it sits a little bit low, this gap is omnipresent. I have tried multiple things to delete it. When I bring the arm up, it is gone, you don't want his arm sticking out all the time. I want it nice and flush by his sides like it is now, just without that gap. If you know a way to fix this, something that I haven't tried with the shoulder arrangement, let me know down in the comments below. There is more of this intricate sculpting up here for the arm, which is a separate piece, more added depth. This shoulder pad can move like you just saw. This is so freaking sick. It's a fully exposed joint, fully integrated into the design. That means he is technically seamless, I guess. These joints, they are supposed to be there. With the very nature of this guy being robotic, this just makes sense. Even the wrist peg has some printed texture on the surface. It isn't as shiny as the rest of him, it still blends in. Of course, I will address the weapons and the thrusters, all the bits and pieces, the optional arms, etc. Let's just talk about the legs first. This hammered out panel for the metal, it's all kinds of crazy geometry. There aren't many flat surfaces with Cyborg, so once again trying to create this, it would have been a downright headache for Hot Toys. The knee joints, just like the arm joints, super impressive. Coming down to his feet, super thin for the knees, then it does bulge out for the calves then thins out again for the ankles. He does have a huge hinge and swivel for the ankles. Because he is so heavy, that joint, it needed to be there. If they went with a double ball peg, it would have looked ugly, it would have thrown off the design, and it wouldn't have been as stable as this is. On the underside of his feet, as you can see, some sculpted detail for the foot portion and the toes. There is no denying, no question, 
These arm cannons, having the LEDs turned on, they give him a massive boost in presence. Without them turned on and getting here, not fun at all. This was a pain in the ass. You have multiple panels to remove, button cell batteries for both sides, and teeny tiny light switches. So to turn them on you have to remove two panels, flick the switch, reinstall the panels, and do the same for the other side. Not my idea of fun. Now you can remove this missile if you want to make it look like he's shot it, or you do have the optional one which I still think is the one he shot at Superman when he was resurrected. Unfortunately, it caused Superman to get all kinds of angry. This one, having a completely different design on one side to the other, asymmetry, it makes him more visually interesting. It's also translucent in the middle, so the light passes through. The optional missile is compatible with either side. If you want it specifically on the right side or the left side, you can just swap it on. It does complete the sculpt work when you plug it in. It looks nice and seamless. I have now installed his shield, which connects pretty securely, I might add, to the wrist peg. That also means it has articulation, so you can move it around. It's just that much more versatile for posing. Cyborg is now doing cosplay, I guess? This is his best Doc Ock with the extra arms. Around the back, you do just insert them. They're on these huge wrist pegs, so it's a hinge and swivel. When you do plug them in, these peg ports are way too visible. They're just straight up nasty. What are they there for? For panels. Normally when these aren't here, there are panels on his back that cover up those holes. They could have done something differently. Maybe just gone with magnets for those removable panels. The arms themselves are on hinges. You can swivel and go forward and back. Then you have one elbow and a second elbow, so you can hinge them pretty much all the way out and make it look even weirder if you so choose. Then the hand is just on a swivel. Those extra thumbs having one on both sides, ooh, very creepy. One arm, if you just want to have one on display, that's a thing. You can just remove the other one. Then to cover up that super visible peg port, you bring in the panels that you removed earlier to put the arms on in the first place. So to have him in a nightmare style scene holding on to the little bullet canister, ooh, that's potentially a possibility. While we're on the whole instructional thing, swapping out the forearms, pretty straightforward. You pull off the normal one, there is a ridge on the bottom. Bringing in the blaster, there is a key, so that ridge will slot into a specific position for this little blaster itself. When you push it on and it clicks in place, that's how you know you've done it correctly. Having six thrusters in total, that means that whatever we do on the right side, you will have to mirror on the left side. We want all the thrusters on, not just some of them. The first panel to remove is underneath his armpit. You wedge your fingernail under it and pull it off. Then plug in the thruster. Because his design is already so crazy with so much going on, you may not actually spot these panels. You might just write off this panel line as extra detail, and I wouldn't blame you. Visually speaking, they are hard to spot at first. There is a groove up top for you to wedge your fingernail under, helps to remove it a little bit more easily. Then you want to install the thruster. This one, it does go on an angle, so if you're pushing it straight up and it's not going in, triangling it. For those counting along at home, yes, this is our final thruster. It's this panel on the back of the calf. Spotting it is one challenge. The second challenge is actually removing it. This peg is enormous. That just means when you do bring in the thruster with an equally long peg, it is going to be super secure when you plug that in. Seriously, it's on there very tight. With all the thrusters installed, this is Cyborg's flight mode. The thrusters, being translucent white plastic on a white background, not very obvious on camera. In person, it's going to be much more visible. It's just the nature of the way we display figures. Chances are, you don't have a bright, pristine white background. We have thrusters on his ribcage, on his thighs and on the back of his calves. They are subtle, once again more so on camera. It's something that I would consider displaying every now and then. It won't however be my main go-to display option. That's just going to be normal cyborg with the actual Ray Fisher head sculpt on. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, 
I can't contain my excitement for a second longer. We have been waiting forever, collectively, for this to happen. We collected the rest of the league and we were just waiting, hoping that Hot Toys would eventually make Cyborg. They have. He's glorious, so is the team fully assembled. This is a moment where someone needs to tell me that I am not dreaming. He's also taller than I was expecting. I thought he'd be around the same height as Flash. He isn't. He's almost as tall as Batfleck. He's no slouch in the height department. No matter which league you're collecting, whether it's Justice League with the brighter coloured suit for soups or Zack Snyder's Justice League, He's going to work well. See, I told you so, he does work well. We've replaced Supes with black-suited Superman from the two-pack, and we've replaced Batman with the tactical suit version. No matter which league you put together, it is going to be one hell of an impressive display. Even though the Snyderverse is kind of fractured now and isn't going to continue, I don't care. I do not care one bit. While we're here, we may as well. It's the third-party version of Darkseid who towers over the rest of the league. This company is also making Steppenwolf, and I will pick him up and we'll do this comparison shot all over again with Steppenwolf, Darkseid, plus the entire league. Going over articulation, being an all-new body, I have no idea what to expect here. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a double ball peg. Looking down to there, looking up to there, decent, but not great for flight poses. Swivel and pivot side to side. The shoulder pads do move out of your way for maximum range of motion. Going up to there with the arms, going forward and back on ratchets. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going just past 90. Then a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso extends up on multiple joints, crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there. They will go slightly further forward, however, if you push this piece back as you push the leg up. They will go back, and they will go out just a touch. This piece does collide with the hip skirt, I guess. Swivel at the hip and at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee on ratchets, going past 90. A hinge and swivel for the ankle, good for forward and back. Swivel and ankle rock. Then lastly, toe articulation. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, there are just so many freaking button cell batteries. There are individual battery compartments in everything. Both head sculpts, the torso, and also in the weapons themselves. Hot Toys, could you not have thought of something better? Have some sort of connection so when you plug the arms in at least, the power is transferred through the torso. Nope, button cell batteries. The second annoying thing is way more obvious in person than it is on camera. It's still not a deal breaker, but worth mentioning. The chest LED. When you turn it on, the center part, that looks good. What doesn't look good? There is so much light bleed. Casting all of this detail work in translucent plastic, then painting it over with silver, hasn't worked. His neck in person is entirely lit up in red. And that just isn't accurate. The third annoying thing I want to stress, I do not care about at all. This does not factor in for me. It will factor in for some people. It's the finish. In the movie, he was made of this otherworldly metal. He was super shiny, very chrome-like. Whereas in figure format, he's much more of a metallic silver. Less super bright shiny chrome. The first cool thing... How many accessories you get? Normally when a company has to produce a new mold like Hot Toys did for Cyborg, nothing is reuse, they have to save budget somewhere else. Nine times out of ten it's either paint or accessories. I'm pleased to report that with Cyborg, I don't think it was either one. The second cool thing is that with the lights off, he is still displayable. He looks way better with the lights on if you can do that. However, with the lights off, you can still see some detail in the eye. There's red there and the circle in the middle, it's still blue. So it doesn't look awful. The third cool thing is the mystery die-cast content. There is definitely metal in here. Somewhere. My cold touch technique is not definitive. I have no idea where it is. I've tried to find it. His legs are heavy, so that means that in the display he is going to be planted. And when you pick him up... He feels really premium and high quality. Wrapping up on Hot Toys, Zack Snyder's Justice League. 
Cyborg. I cannot tell you how good it feels to finally be saying those words. I've been waiting for years. No, no, collectively, we've all been waiting for years. Chances are you're in the same exact boat as I am. You've collected the rest of the league, maybe a couple of third-party figures here and there. Nothing comes close to completing the league itself. Those other third-party figures, they ain't no cyborg. This guy is. He is a home run by Hot Toys. From a pure technical perspective, he's really impressive. Hot Toys, they had to do something that the production team in charge of the movie itself never had to even entertain doing. Make a practical cyborg. Not CGI, where you can cheat and bits and pieces can intersect. Something real, tactile, tangible, that can move, that can pose. It doesn't have a ton of really ugly joints here and there, nail the proportions, nail the finish, give us light up effects, multiple different head sculpts, and a ton of different accessories. They have delivered on all counts. This figure has exceeded all of my expectations. I had super high hopes going in. This was a unicorn. It was a grail. It was a white whale that a lot of people, including me, thought would never happen. It did happen. It is that good. And yes, the answer to the question that some people may have, you do need this in your DCEU collection. If you love the Snyderverse like I do, and a lot of people do, hashtag restore the Snyderverse, this guy will eventually, if not now, maybe later, make his way into your collection. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in four and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.